Hey, what's up? Back again. First base note hit me in the chest, and I was just like, there's no way that's too late. MB Enclosures it has his own YouTube channel, and this guy is an animal when it comes to designing boxes. And hey, what's up? Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to unbox the JBL Arena 8. I've been interested in this 8 for a long time. Uh, if, you, if you recall, I had the JBL Stadium 8. Two SSI uh, eight on the channel maybe about two years ago. That's an eight inch well, for sound quality. You know, JL subs are geared primarily for sound quality, so I had that on the channel. And they had this SSI, which is uh, selectable impedance. You can slide the two. Well, from that point to now, recently, I think within the last year, they have came out with their SQL driver, and that's what the arena. Uh, subs are so let's unbox it right quick. I got mine off Amazon. I think it's $399. Yes, $399 $400 for this for this eight whereas the stadium is 265 I believe it comes nice and packaged. I mean Harman Carmen paid a nice for the packaging uh, Has the wolf on the outside of the box tells you on the back side that on it. <laughs> tells you on the back side the unrivaled power handling of a 1200 peak 400 watts 8 hmm, JBL wants to get inside the push for high performance 8 inch drivers so it, it came fine it came within I think I paid it came within 3 days from Amazon I think I bought it directly from JBL inside you have the manual and you have the woofer. It's not wrapped in plastic or nothing. It's magnet and there's the woofer. So let's get the woofer out the box. It's quite simple. Well, the packaging they had is great for protecting the woofer. So that's included inside. Also, I believe, oh, here we go. Inside the styrofoam itself, you have the let me get this out. This is nice. The mountain gasket for the underside of the eight. A JBL sticker if you want to put that inside your window. And then they give you some screws. And the Ziploc bag to mount the driver. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. Now, let's turn this camera around and get up close and personal with this. JBL 8. Okay, first thing I want you to notice is the trim ring. The trim ring on JBL uses, they like the aesthetics of their drivers. So they want it to look very sleek and sophisticated. <laughs> so they put a trim ring on it so you can hide the mountain holes. And the trim ring has little tabs. They line up with these holes. And pretty much when you find this little tag here in the arena, you line up with the JBL logo. And you can just line them two lines up. And when you push here, and we push there, then the rest of them gonna pop right on in. And that's nice. They paid for that. Okay. Next is let's look at this surround. Coming in from the trim ring, look at the surround. We have a neutral rubber surround. It's called a rubber surround. And the benefit of this is this. Thanks to the shallow mountain depth, it has a very shallow taper. This would easily fit under the seat of F 150 with no seat lift. Or any truck with no seat lift. Uh, Ram, 5th Gens, Fords, no seat lift. 2018 and up Chevys, no seat lift needed at all. Well, this type of driver, by using this rubber surround, not only do you have longevity and performance, but it's very weather resistant. This type of surround, rubber surround, is not subject to the elements. Heat, humidity, cold, warm, wet, none of those factors, uh, none of the barometric pressures are going to impact this surround. Also, the added benefit, let's say you got this on the seat of a truck enclosure, big base, small space, and you have a grill over the top. 
But someone gets inside that has water and mud on their shoes and it splatters onto the cone. Well, the cone is laminated. This laminate has a protective water resistant surface on top of it and the surround is rubber. This will in no way be affected by any kind of inclement incident water hitting it. That's a plus. Okay. On the knee, we can see that we have a non-pressed paper cone. Let me get y'all get a little closer in there. Non-pressed paper cone. And this is the feature I really want you to notice here. There is no triple joint. Most subwoofers, a lot of them, even some of the kings except for the DD, always put their cone and their spider and their former and put a bit of goo there. What I've been told is that that makes the spider limited by the, the throw of the surround. By elevating the cone above the spider and connecting it there, you can get the full throw of the spider even though it's not, even though the spider can always throw farther than the surround. But the surround can limit the spider by being connected to the triple joint. By putting the cone up higher, you can get the full travel of the cone. And it will still not be impeded by the, the, the surround because it's up higher. Those of you who know something about geometry can say, yeah, okay, you can have you can have more throw here. This would have all this would have to be have is maybe three quarters of this throw. Three quarters of the 13 millimeters X Max for this to reach its full potential and not being impeded by the surround. Nice little touch. So when I see this, I always point that out. Now the second thing I want to point out is that they use two two and a half inch staggered voice coils so that no matter what, as one coil is leaving the gap, the other is still inside the gap because they're not, I guess they, I guess I would say they are staggered. They are, they are staggered. They are, the winding height doesn't look to be too far up as you can see by looking inside and I do see, do I see, no, I don't see holes on the former that I can see here, but they do list it inside their spec sheet that these are opposed, so that no matter what, you're always going to have winding inside the gap. Now, so you basically have an overhung design, because you can see the windings above the top plate, but they're using an underhung theory, so that you always have a magnetic, you're always going to have windings in the gap throughout this trope. That's going to lead to linearity and accuracy of base. However, it has a frequency response that's quite high. And I think the frequency response on this driver, let me pull it up, is uh, da 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 da, hmm, A, da 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 da, they don't have it listed on this driver. It has a very high sensitivity, and maybe that has something to do with the, uh, the voice call. 89 dB per wattage. Okay, the frequency response is 50 to 1.5 kilohertz. Now, that's pretty high. Normally, a true subwoofer would be maybe 500 watts top. 1500 watt kilohertz, that's way up in mid base region. Now, as you go higher in size, like the 10 to 12, the frequency response drops substantially. The 10 is at 36 to 1.5 and the 12 is at 29 to 1.5. Here the frequency response is at 50 and they do not list the FS that I can see, that I can see on this driver. Let me make sure that I'm putting up their specs now behind the scenes and the FS of this driver is, da, 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 da. oh yeah it is right here, 46 hertz. 46 hertz. So that's, that's pretty respectable. Some of the uh, kings have a very high, bless you, baby. Have a bless you again. Have a very high FS as well. So that's a nice tech. That's a nice. That's a neck technology there. The this is the rubber boot on the uh, the motor. It has a dual slug motor. Uh, vinyl on the voice coil. Pole venting. No, no holes Schaefer at the top of the pole that I can feel. And this is the interesting feature that you see on all JBL subwoofers. 
the selective impeded switching, which is a nice touch. Takes all the confusion out of wiring your subwoofer up. Put your positive wire in, put your negative wire in. You want a form low, go to the amplifier, slide over to four. You want a two, boom, slide over to two. Real simple, nice and clean. You don't have to do no wine. It's going to tell you exactly what it is. But I will tell you this, make sure it's snug all the way over. Do not think because the difference between four and two that if you put it halfway, you're going to get a different ohm load. No, what you're going to have here is a, a non-working subwoofer. Make sure it's all the way over to it. You'll feel like a little click. That's where you want to put it at. Okay, so we talked about the surround. We talked about the cone. We talked about the trim ring. We talked about the opposed voice coils that are possibly staggered so you can always keep some kind of winding inside the gap so it'd be linear throughout its entire stroke we talked about the 13 millimeter x max we talked about the cone and how it is not attached to the triple joint like most standard woofers they did something different there we talked about that we died we didn't talk about the dual progressive row spiders this has dual progressive row spiders yeah i've seen the one at the bottom i want to say it had one you could push in here and you can actually feel the second one that you touch so, no, no, this is a very beautifully crafted. I mean, you wouldn't expect anything less from JBL. Uh, this is a $400 woofer. Next thing we're going to do is test the QMS. We're going to see just how much stroke we can get. Uh, it's rated 400 watts. So, I have a capability of giving it 400 watts at 4 ohm and 2 ohm. And we're going to just how much performance, how, what kind of mechanical noise can we detect if it has any with this sound quality drive, sound quality SQL driver from JBL. Stay tuned.